Do you feel fat, foggy, and fatigued? If so, what is causing it? And how do you go from fat, foggy, and fatigued to fit, focused, and full of life? How do you finally lose that stubborn excess weight? Do you go to your doctor and you feel sometimes that you're more knowledgeable than your doctor? I know I have sometimes. <laughs> well, today we're going to figure out how we can get rid of this feeling of fogginess and fatigue, how we can lose that stubborn excess weight. And we're going to be talking a lot about thyroid and thyroid function, how to find a good doctor and uh, how we can just kick ass in our, in our overall health. And to do that, I've brought in uh, a lovely woman by the name of L. Russ. She is the author of the best-selling book, Paleo Thyroid Solution. Make sure you check that out, Paleo Thyroid Solution. She's a, uh, a health and life coach, and she's the host of the Primal Blueprint podcast, of which I have been a guest on before when we were talking about the 30-day no alcohol challenge and the Swanee's blue light blocking glasses that I have. Uh, it's a big welcome to L. Russ. How are you, L? Good. I don't have my glasses with me right now, but I do love them. So thank you very much for those. Well, thank you very much for the kind compliment. Let's just dig right in. What sure the hell? Head. What the hell is thyroid? What the yeah. hell is a thyroid? And what is low thyroid function? Explain. Let's talk about it. Actually, I got a lot of people calling me from Australia about this uh, lately. So um, the problem is, is that um, everybody in the world has a thyroid gland. It's below your Adam's apple if you're a guy. It's on your neck. It's a little butterfly-shaped gland. It's the master gland of the entire human body. It's responsible for every metabolic function, from brain function to the production and regulation of sex hormones, everything. So what happens is oftentimes people go into the doctor with some kind of problem. It could be, for a female, it could be gynecological. It could be low sex drive in a male. It could be, I'm tired, I'm gaining weight, I can't think straight. And the problem is, is no one's looking at the root cause. And this is almost the root cause of a million things. So basically, when this gets off, you will eventually go down the road where you will get diagnosed with something that you otherwise would not have gotten if this were fine. For example, I was misdiagnosed at one point with polycystic ovarian syndrome. That sounds messed up. Who wants that? No, no. I chance. don't want that. No I chance. don't know what it is, but I don't want it. No one wants it. Um, now, the question would be like, well, did I actually really have it? No, I didn't. But because I was in a hypothyroid state and it affects everything in the body, so you won't die of hypothyroidism, but you will die of something that you get during hypothyroidism if it is never treated. And so basically, essentially, being hypothyroid for a, a long period of time is, is like slowly getting freaking murdered. By, by your own body. And let me just throw this out there. So everyone has a thyroid gland. Now, if for some reason someone had their thyroid gland removed because of cancer, surgery, something like that, they still have to take thyroid hormones. So they have to replace what the body's not getting. And there's lots of things in this modern toxic you know, environment that throw off the thyroid. 200 million people worldwide have it. 25 million Americans have it. 60% are undiagnosed. It's, it's a stupid epidemic. And it's as dumb as if we had like some polio resurgence or something where we'd be like, you know, didn't we like figure this out? You know what yeah. I mean? So the knowledge is there, but the problem is, is that we're talking about a lot of uninformed doctors. And you know enough about health, James, to know like if you and I were sitting at a restaurant and we were eating a steak, fatty steak with some fat and someone you know turned to us and they said "Ooh, you guys better be careful you know saturated fat leads to heart disease we would laugh at them because we know that that's an old paradigm and it's a it's a false old way of thinking and the same goes for thyroid health so the majority of doctors and endocrinologists are hurting patients and on the same note i want to talk and i know that you're going to be a fan of this because you're a self-empowerment person and we have to help ourselves Anyone who goes into a doctor is just looking for a prescription if you're going to your HMO doctor and they're spending 10 minutes. A lot of the reasons thyroid patients suffer, again, undiagnosed, or they're on the ride thyroid hormone, they're never really feeling right. Their doctors are saying, well, you've got a closet eating disorder, or let's just give you more medication. And the problem is, is that the patient isn't doing their own research. I have spoken to hundreds of patients over the years, um, myself, a patient included, and Almost every single person that I talk to, if I ask them, do you even know what the thyroid hormone you're taking is? Do you know how the thyroid works? They don't know how to answer that. So I want to step up and just say, it doesn't matter what you've been diagnosed with, get busy researching it. 
because the doctor, you might, like you said, know more about them and it'll also help you help yourself in finding the right doctor and learning how to weed out these uneducated, uninformed doctors that are frankly just very entrenched in ego. It's just, a, it's a very indoctrinated system and a belief system. And you've got to go to these awesome functional MDs and anti-aging MDs and, you know, integrative MDs who go above and beyond their training, who are up to date. You know, that's, that's what the book's really about. And it also is about, I, I suffered horribly um, for years. I had over 30 hypothyroid symptoms and I was a total mess. Uh, six years of my life was ruined. I know people whose 20 years of their life were ruined. Um, and so just right off the bat for women, it often manifests with gynecological issues or cold hands and feet, always cold when other people aren't, hair falling out, exhausted, puffy face and puffy and bloated, um, inability to lose weight. It affects your brain in horrific ways because um, our brains have more receptors for thyroid hormone than any other uh, system in the body. And so when people get very depressed when they're hypothyroid, it's not just because they got fat. Some people don't get fat, but a lot of people do. Um, because what it does is it's, it's like having no wood on the fire. There's no energy being created in your body. This is the energy center. It is responsible for busting out the most important hormone to human life, which is T3. I want you, yeah. to, I want you to, to, to show me where I can locate it. And I want the listener and the viewer to be able to locate their thyroid sure. on, their, on their body. Because I'm sure most people don't know where it is. I, when I thought of thyroid once upon a time, I thought it was in my legs, like in my, <laughs> in my, uh, in the, uh, the thigh, my thigh, you know, it's like thyroid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thyroid. It's in your thigh. Now I'm, mm. now it's in my, uh, now it's in my neck. Okay, cool. It's, in your so, neck. it's probably below your Adam's apple for a guy. Okay. And so I found my Adam's apple. Gland. Yeah. And then you go down and there's a little butterfly shaped gland that's, that's there. You, you, you probably won't. I can feel it. Can you feel a little bit? Well, I so, can feel something. I don't know if that's it. I'm just, you know. I'm, yeah. Yeah. It probably is. A lot of times, one of the symptoms too is issues with the neck. So people, <clears throat> have to clear their throat constantly during the day, hoarse voice, feeling really uncomfortable issues with the neck. Like you don't want anything touching the neck, no turtlenecks, like very weird about that. Those are beginning symptoms too of, of this being inflamed and something going wrong. But at the end of the day, this thing is responsible for any fat burning that you could possibly do as a human being. So anyone who's interested in getting into shape, whether you have a thyroid or problem or not, you need to learn about this gland and learn how to optimize it and treat it. And I'll just throw out a couple things right away. You know, selenium huge with thyroid output well right? actually before we get into that how what causes so when you say thyroid issues mm -hmm. are you saying that the thyroid can be worn down you're saying it can not work as effectively as it's supposed to work is it not supposed to work but then it starts doing it if you eat poorly like what's the what what's going on let's do two scenarios one yeah. thyroid is doing what it's supposed to do how do we get uh, what's it doing two thyroid is not working the way it should be working how did we how did we make that happen right um well what happens is is so the brain sends a signal to the thyroid when it senses your blood is low in thyroid hormones so the signal gets sent to the brain of the thyroid to produce more thyroid hormones okay the thyroid pumps out two thyroid hormones mainly and the most important one that we really need to worry about the the only thing that really matters it's called t3 now if you were to google t3 right now or cytomel which is the brand name for it fifty thousand bodybuilding websites would come up and you'd be like what's up with this and that's because those suckers abuse t3 to burn as much fat as they can before a competition to lean down they cycle it for like six to eight weeks very dangerous very dumb not smart, but it works. It just goes to show you what an important fat burner T3 is. The, um, so the brain sends a signal to the thyroid. The thyroid pumps out um, T4 and T3, and those are the two we really need to know about. But the problem in the past is that doctors are only checking T4, and here's the deal. T4 is a pro-hormone. Its only job is to convert into T3. So a lot of doctors aren't even testing the thing that matters. They're only testing the pro-hormone. They're not testing to see, is it actually converting and doing its job? So that's one thing that can go wrong. Your body, let's say it's working normally. You have a healthy thyroid. You're doing great. Uh, it, the body pumps out enough thyroid hormone. But you have a selenium deficiency, or you're low in iron, or you've got low D, or you're super stressed, or you're overworking out. Now, in those scenarios, the body in the primal perspective your body, which is trying to protect you, will slow down, giving you this very, very powerful energy hormone. 
It, it, so for example, if you're over, a lot of people get hypothyroidism from just starving themselves and working out too much. The classic like over dieter, you know, LA actress, which was me. So, you know, I got it that way pretty much. And what happens is in that state, your body thinks you're starving. And so it says, well, wait a minute, we don't want her to burn any more fat. She's starving. We don't know when she's going to get food. And also let's lower her sex drive because she shouldn't be having children right now. Furthermore, if she gets pregnant, we're going to miscarry that because she doesn't have enough to sustain this life. And so that's really, it's, it's all the signals we're sending our body. And that's why living, in my opinion, a paleo primal or uh, somewhat of an ancestral life is more in line with what our thyroids are going to want the kind of messages it's going to want to receive. So let's say your body then pumps out all the appropriate amounts of thyroid hormone. That's great. Is it going to where it needs to go? And it can't get to where it needs to go if you've got serious inflammation, major adrenal issues, if you, again, selenium deficiency, uh, and some other things like low ferritin iron storage. So it's, it's one thing, you know, thyroid can work well. Is it then getting metabolized properly? And so my book talks in depth about thyroid hormone metabolism as well, you know, how to optimize that. And when you have like blood sugar ups and downs and you're hypoglycemic and you're over-exercising, it's a lot of cortisol, it's a lot of adrenals, it's a lot of inflammation going on in the body and that inhibits and will prevent somebody and can slow down so, thyroid function. So the problem with the thyroid then, it, the main problem is hyper thyroidism, right? And Actually, hypothyroidism, low thyroid is more common. Hyperthyroid is a tough one because it's often an autoimmune caused by something called Graves' disease. And one of the only ways to treat it is not only medication. Uh, to so how does the average person know that they have even have a problem with their thyroid? What, how Do does you want me to average... tell you the blood test? You want to tell me like symptoms or? Symptoms and a blood test. Like someone, sure. someone is listening or watching now sure. and struggles with losing weight or has low sex drive or has some kind of health issue. How do they know it's something to do with their thyroid? Well, symptoms are the greatest teachers. Okay. Having a low body temperature is something everybody can assess at home. You can get an $11 Gerotherm thermometer at the CVS. You can do a basal body temperature in the morning and an afternoon. All humans are 98.6 degrees in the afternoon for a reason. And in the morning, we're roughly between 97.7 or 78 to 98.3. If you are constantly below, and the other thing is you'll feel it. You'll feel freezing. You'll be freezing in winter. When I was seriously hypothyroid, I was 96 degrees all the time. I never got above that. So that's one symptom. The other is literally any kind of depression, general malaise. People get misdiagnosed with bipolar disorder, depression, and you can give someone Prozac, but it's going to work for three months and then it's not going to work anymore because you never treated the problem and the root cause. So that's one of them. I have a list of about 30 symptoms in my book. And if you go on to marksdailyapple.com, there are several articles about my book and I list a lot of those symptoms there. Um, it usually manifests in weight and energy and temperature. Those are some main ones. Now, there's some really random ones like inner itching of the ears, acne, um, heavy legs, uh, heart palpitations. That's usually iron or adrenal related too. Um, libido? Libido, yeah. Libido can go away both men and women um, and totally disappear. Um, any kind of gynecological or sexual dysfunction in males or females. And so again, like you might go to the gynecologist and you've got cysts or you've got a fibroid and then they go, great, we'll take it out and we'll give you hormones and we'll do this, but they're not testing the master plan. It literally is the master plan of the body. You, if you don't have a thyroid, you will die. So if, if, if you don't have a thyroid and AKA thyroid hormones, and you cannot live without it. Like no human being can live without that. Then what do you think a life's going to be like with suboptimal or really crappy, shitty levels of thyroid hormone? It's going to be this slow death. And often you don't see it coming right away. Sometimes it hits people right away and they wake up and they're freezing every day and they know. Sometimes it's a mental decline. One of the biggest things you notice is you feel like you're starting to get dumb. You're, like you're starting to get dumb, you can't focus, you can't read, you need to reread things, you can't remember numbers or, or, or any yeah. kind of cognitive issues, mixing up one's words like a dyslexic, hand dexterity, not messy handwriting, not being able to write, general disinterest in life, a general malaise. And the thing is, it can be not horrific to where mine went, it can just be this subtle nastiness going on. So in order to get it, and I'll Again, details so much this is my book, and there's also a lot of free podcasts on this, but just to give your listeners 
the really true test you have to get that most doctors don't know, but the ones that do is TSH, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and then two Hashimoto's antibodies tests, which is TPOAB and TGAB. Those are the standard thyroid panel. And then I would add on there, ferritin needs to be between about 50 and 100. Uh, vitamin D needs to be between 70 and 90. And those are major cofactors. So is B12. A lot of um, DHEA sulfate is another one. That's an anti-aging hormone and an adrenal hormone that a lot of people uh, are low in, even people in their like early 30s that I see. You know, it's just this modern stressful world does affect our thyroids because it can blow our, our, out our adrenals. And when the adrenals are low, that can cause a thyroid problem. So when you're, saying, when you're saying these, uh, these bodybuilders pump out T3 and they're taking these pills and everything, yeah. there, there, must, there must be a natural way to, to, to get the T3 coming out, right? Well, or, do, or, is, or is taking the supplement, like let's just say that we discover that we have a thyroid issue or we assume we don't do the blood test, we don't do that. But right. we want to just try something to see if it is the thyroid. What can we do other than take a T3 supplement? I would, well, first of all, there's no such thing as a T3 supplement. Anything out there that says it is a low to malarkey T3 hormone is the only thing that would actually do it. But this is what I would do naturally. Uh, I have a pro protocols in my book. I'd follow a strict paleo primal ancestral protocol. It's the best in terms of blood glucose management. It's the best for what adrenals can do. And I'd heal and test nutrient levels at that point. If you want to just mess around with something that is very innocuous and won't hurt anyone is take 200 to 400 micrograms of selenium every day. And the best form is called S-E-methyl L-selenocysteine. And that is really responsible for the conversion of T4 to T3. So aside from lifestyle and diet, now grains trigger Hashimoto's, which is an autoimmune form of hypothyroidism. Not everyone has that, but it's more and more common. So if someone discovered or thought they had a thyroid issue, get rid of all grains and sugar and anything inflammatory. Get the lifestyle under control where you are not all over the place with you know chronic cardio and overexercising, and then take some selenium. Get the vitamin D levels up. Uh, wait eight weeks and then maybe get retested. Uh, there are a lot of people who naturally can reverse these situations if they nip it in the bud through diet and lifestyle and nutrient optimization. It's very possible, and sometimes it's not. And if it's not, that's okay. I mean, uh, people live really long lives on thyroid hormone. I'm on thyroid hormone. Um, I probably didn't need to be if I knew what say, I knew now. When you say you're on thyroid hormone, what do you mean? Uh, I take it via my mouth like a pill okay. every day. And so if you don't have a thyroid gland, you have to be on thyroid hormone replacement. And so a lot of people are scared of it though. They're like, well, I want to try to, to do everything I can to not go on thyroid hormone. And I agree with that. You want your body to work the way it should work naturally. But if it doesn't, there is nothing scary or wrong or awful about being on thyroid hormone because it's, it's bioidentical. It's, it's natural. You know, it's, it's, and how does one get on? Do you have to go to a doctor and have them prescribe it? The um, I didn't. The reason I wrote the book is that I actually had so many doctors fail me over 50 doctors in Los Angeles. And we live in a city of a lot of famous celebrity doctors and that no one, no one could help me. I had no choice but to take my health in my own hands. And I did it myself. I actually dosed myself twice in 10 years. I had two bouts uh, of hypothyroidism and I solved it both by myself, ordering my own medication through the internet. Don't suggest it, but that's why I wrote this book because I shouldn't have had to do that. I live in a major city. I went to see a ton of doctors. I had a PPO. I should not have had to do this myself. Now, granted, I'm smart enough. I'm capable enough. I, I, I was able to work from home. I could really focus and make this my full-time job, and it was a full-time job. And then I, had, I was left in the dust and had to do it on my own, which is why I wrote the book. Um, and I have a doctor on the book as well who's an amazing functional MD. So it's not, you know, if someone's like, well, what do you know? You're not a doctor. Doctor. First of all, the best-selling thyroid books have been written by patients because we know what it's like. And also, I do have a doctor on the book who's who's really brilliant, and the Q and A with him is great. The thyroid problems are on the rise. The one thing you can do is not do anything anti-thyroid. I mean, get yourself out of maybe chlorinated environments. Um, get rid of the parabens and all the the junky, you know, body stuff. Um, so when you're talking about junky body stuff, you're meaning stop lotions. Using Lotions, hairsprays, things, use natural stuff. Dr. Bonner's, I think, is pretty good. Um, natural stuff with some natural oils. Um, but just, I, I wasn't quite clear on, the, on your answer there on how sure. you get thyroid ho hormone via a pill. Are you saying like... Literally a hormone. 
and you take the pill. Yeah, but how do you get the pill? Like you have well, to- How is it, how is it made or? No, no, how do you get it? Like, can you buy it on the internet or do you have yes, to- you Yep, you can buy it on the internet, okay. um, but- You don't need a prescription for it. You can just buy it on the internet. That's right, you don't. Um, again, I, I wanna warn people against trying to attempt to do this yourself unless you are gonna actually be like a super expert about it because it takes a serious attention to detail and a lot of nuances to do it yourself, but a lot of people have. So yes, you can, you can buy it on the internet. The best is obviously to go to a doctor who's monitoring this for you, of course. Yeah. Um, okay. And it's one of those things where like, for example, Someone might just say, well, look, I'm getting fat. I think it's my thyroid. I'm just going to go buy some T3 and take it. It doesn't work that way. The moment you introduce thyroid hormones into your body, you are now shutting down this, this feedback loop system. You're taking over and your own thyroid may not come back. Now you may have just started a train that you're going to have to be on forever. So that is not something to take lightly, right? You know, a lot of people might just be like, I'll just go take some thyroid hormone and lose weight. It actually doesn't work like that. You could take too much T3 and gain weight. It's a Goldilocks situation. It really is. That's why we've got this amazing thermostat of 98.6. Mm -hmm. We are all, you know, not too hot, not too cold, you know, and you can find that right balance on thyroid hormones, but anyone attempting to just be like, oh, I want to lose some weight. I'll take thyroid hormone for a couple of weeks. I mean, that's, that's a really bad recipe, but okay. yes, you can get them yourself. And I did, I did for years. We're talking to L. Russ, who is the author of the book Paleo Thyroid Solution. You can check that out. Just Google Paleo Thyroid Solution, L. Russ. Um, now, you were saying that you felt like you were let down by some of the world's best doctors. We we're both, mm -hmm. both in Los Angeles here at the moment. How does one, if they're going to a doctor, know that they're being let down by the doctor? Like, is there a question that you can ask and based on their answer, all of a sudden there are alarm bells that you have a system in place that you can recommend? Absolutely. And I, I, I detail all that in my book, but I'll give, I'll give that to you guys now, which is essentially you have to, you can call a doctor's office and say, does this doctor test free T3 and, and treat patients by symptoms as well as lab work? Okay. Now, I just want to say this out the bat. I'm going to bag on them. Endocrinologists are the absolute worst doctors classically to see ever for a thyroid problem, yet they are endocrine experts, right? So you would think that they were the best. They are not. I warn everyone to not go to an endocrinologist. You're better off going to a functional medicine doctor or a DO or an anti-aging uh, or integrative MD. Those are the people that usually understand this stuff. The other question you can ask is, does the doctor only prescribe Synthroid, T4 only, or do they, are they open to prescribing natural desiccated thyroid, um, like Armour, NatureThroid, Westroid? If the nurse or the people say, say, no, we don't prescribe that to patients, then that's an uninformed doctor who's an idiot and you run. Okay, you so hang on. Let me, I, love, yeah, I love this. They're an idiot and run. They are, run. They are. They really are. I'll tell they them went like, to college. They did all this stuff yeah. and they're like, they're an idiot. No matter if they went to Harvard, doesn't, mean, doesn't make a difference to me. That's funny. So um, so the questions again, because you, you, you said it very quickly and I want to make right. sure our listener gets it. So does the doctor test for free T3? Right. And do they also treat patients via symptoms? Or do they just go by blood work? Mm -hmm. Now, okay. most endocrinologists will just go by blood work and they won't even test the free T3. The other thing you can ask again is, does the doctor prescribe a variety of medications to treat thyroid patients or do they just prescribe Synthroid? Do they also prescribe natural desiccated thyroid? Okay, um, Synthoid, is that what it is? Synthroid is the number one selling drug in America and often fails a lot of people, but most yeah. uninformed doctors only treat thyroid patients with T4 only, which is called Synthroid is the brand name. Yeah. So you would ask- I'm uninformed the then, because I've never heard of it. I'm uninformed. Yeah, well, the, but, but most people are listening if that thyroid stuff, if they're on Synthroid, by the way, need to reevaluate your situation is what I would say, just in case it works for a lot of people, but it also fails a lot of people eventually. So then you want to ask, you know, so is, is the doctor limiting? and the thing is, you're never going to know until you meet them. But if a doctor laughs or patronizes you because you ask them to take a test or you say, I want these exact tests and they go, yeah, yeah, whatever. I got to test your iron. I know what I'm doing. And then they don't, they, they classically don't. I literally just today I had someone email me, brought the, the list of tests to the doctor said, I need these exact tests. The doctor didn't take them. They took whatever they felt like taking instead. 
So you need to be kind of proactive and adamant. You need a doctor who's going to really listen to you and your symptoms. But at the end of the day, people, you got to invest some money in this because it's a dead end when you're really going to a lot of these HMO doctors who are going to spend 10 minutes with you. Yeah. The doctors are going to spend more time with you. are going to understand this comprehensive system and not just go, oh, yeah, here are your numbers. Great. Here's Synthroid. See you later. Enjoy yourself. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. What, are, what are the name of the tests again, please? Sure. TSH free, as in like freedom, free T3, free T4, reverse T3, and then two, everyone should get tested for Hashimoto's just to make sure you don't have this autoimmune disorder. But the two Hashimoto's antibody tests are TPOAB, meaning antibody, and then TGAB. And that's that's a pretty comprehensive thyroid panel. And then again, I think I said there's ferritin, you know, vitamin D and some other related thyroid tests. Because what can happen is you can take the thyroid test, an uninformed doctor gives you a bunch of thyroid hormones, you're still not feeling right. And they're not realizing that you might have underlying adrenal issues, that you might have underlying iron issues, which are very common in hypo patients. And then no amount of thyroid hormone you get is actually going to work and do the job it needs to do. And this is why a lot of patients just stay sick, you know, and people have lost, I, I just spoke to someone who literally for 30 years, 30 years has suffered. They can barely get out of bed now. Every doctor just goes, I don't know, go to the Mayo Clinic. And then I look at her blood results and I'm like, oh, you have horrific Hashimoto's and you have no T3 in your body. Did anyone not notice this? Of all of the 300,000 doctors you've gone to, no one saw the elephant in the room on her test. So now she's learning that 30 years of suffering has been because no one was evaluating or looking at her tests correctly or in the right way. And also she didn't step up and learn about it. She just popped that Synthroid pill 30 years ago and figured, okay, I guess my doctors know what's up. And I think you would agree with me on this. It doesn't matter what it is. If a doctor tells you you have something, or you know, you get second, third opinions and you research it yourself. You know, don't just, uh, I had a doctor give me a pill once. Um, I, I, I was a thyroid issue and I didn't know it at the time. And I was really fat. I was just couldn't lose weight, couldn't focus. And they gave me a weight loss drug that's methamphetamine based, which completely blew out my adrenals. I just didn't, I was dumb and just said, okay. Do you know what I mean? So I think we have to step up as patients. You have to realize that these doctors, just because someone has a degree from Harvard does not mean they actually know more than you do about a particular subject. It's funny because the, the reptilian part of the human brain always just thinks, oh, a doctor knows what they're talking about. And, and we, we put so much trust in our, in our doctors. And, and I think it's important that we say that most, I, my experience has been most doctors have been actually very good. Um, but we shouldn't just assume that because they're a doctor that they actually are prescribing the, the correct medi medication or even giving the correct diagnoses to, to begin with. So it is important to kind of like shop around almost, right? It's like if you're Absolutely. looking for the best car deal to save money, then you would shop around, but not that you would skim money with doctors. If you're looking for the best doctor, or the best healthcare, you should shop around as well. Would you agree with that, Elle? Uh, no question about it. Unfortunately, I had to do a lot of shopping. <laughs> I had to do a lot of shopping. Um, and actually only found the doctor that I go to now because I was looking for a doctor on my book and he ended up sort of saving my life and it was great. Uh, so I have a wonderful doctor who's in California, but for the most part, it was, I, I drive two and a half hours to see him and I live in Los Angeles proper like you do. So, you know, that's kind of crazy, right? We've got, this town is filled with some of the best doctors. So if that's happening to me, what do you think is happening to someone in a small town in the corner of Iowa somewhere? Yeah. And the yeah. best, the best type of doctor to seek out then is what is called a, a what exactly? A functional medicine MD, yeah. a, a, an MD doctor that has training in integrative medicine, orthomolecular, functional medicine, anti-aging. These are the people that kind of know the latest stuff with thyroid and they get this stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a great doctor I know, Dick, Nick Delgado, who's very good. Um, I've, he's an anti-aging doctor and he, he knows his stuff. But, um, okay, great. He probably, he probably knows all about free T3 and I guarantee you, he probably routinely tests every, everyone for what I just told you because yeah. he's 
Those guys usually know what they're doing. Yeah. So there you go. If you don't know anything about thyroid uh, issues, now you know about thyroid issues. And if you want to learn more about this, then you should uh, definitely grab a copy of L. Russ's book, which is called Paleo Thyroid Solution. Where can we find that, L? You can find it at Barnes and Nobles or Amazon or other resellers, Target online. Um, you can also visit lrust.com if you want to learn more about me. And uh, yeah, I just, um, anyone can reach out. I, I love helping people. And at the end of the day, I mean, I wrote the book that I was looking for that I couldn't find. Do you know what I mean? I mean, I, I, uh, I, I'm so glad because I wanted to see blood results examples. I wanted to hear success stories. And I've got all of that in my book, before and after photos. How do you look at blood work? How do you do it? Because I want to teach people how to do what I learned how to do on my own, but that they have this manual so that they can either bring it into their doctor and go, hey, will you read what this doctor said? Or at least they can be knowledgeable enough to, to get on the right path to finding the right doctor. Yeah. yeah. Well, L. Russ, L. Russ, I should say, thank you so much for your time. I appreciate you thank bringing you. your expertise to my, uh, to my viewers and listeners and I uh, appreciate you. Thank you and so much. to the listener, I'll catch you on the next one. See you. Here you go, Chris. Here's your check. Thank you. All right. So how do you get a mentor, as in Chris has been mentored by me, and get paid for it like I just paid him? Just got a check. Well done.